With the advent of social media came an extended reach of everyone's voice. And for athletes in particular, they took this advantage and ran with it, with their naturally huge fan base that they've built up over their careers. Today, two stories dropped concerning how athletes treat themselves and how they view themselves in the larger apparatus of the sports business. And if you know anything about this channel, we don't just follow narratives once. We follow narratives consistently as they develop, and this is something that I think bears mentioning. Let's discuss how athletes should be and are perceived in the wider business world of sports. Let's begin with quickly summarizing both stories. We'll start with this one from ESPN and uh, Jurgen Klopp, Liverpool's manager over in England, blames broadcasters for a rash of injuries. He lashed out at uh, BT and Sky Sports, both of whom broadcast games that English teams are involved in. And, uh, and he says that essentially it's their fault that Liverpool has dealt with so many injuries uh, because of the pandemic and because of fixture congestion. Liverpool has dealt with, at one time, more than half of their starting lineup being hurt. And so uh, Jurgen Klopp has essentially said that it's because the broadcasters essentially control the fixture schedule and make it very, very difficult for players to stay healthy because they get very little rest. And this quote stands out to me specifically. Klopp says, quote, it's really difficult for the players. That's what is difficult. The rest is just a decision on a desk in an office. And so we'll, we'll kind of circle back to that. But again, and remember the, the narrative here, what I'm trying to eventually get to is how players, and in this case coaches, perceive themselves in the wider world of the sports business apparatus. Let's get to the second story here, first broken, I believe, by The Athletic. Uh, top soccer players planning to object to the use of their likenesses in the FIFA video game series, something that we've dealt with here on this channel in terms of playing FIFA. It was started by Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I'm sure you know him, whether or not you are a soccer fan. Um, and he says, who gave FIFA EA Sports permission to use my name and face, uh, tags the FIFA Players Union. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not aware to be a member of FIFA Pro, that's the union, and if I am, I was put there without any real knowledge through some weird maneuver, and for sure I never allowed uh, FIFA or FIFA Pro to make money using me. And apparently lots of players, most notably Gareth Bale, have also spoken their disagreement with with this particular, with the FIFA video game series and with the way that they have been treated by the FIFA Pro Union and the fact that they sold their, their, they essentially gave away their image and likeness to be used in FIFA. They don't get a direct payout, meaning that you know EA Sports doesn't send them a check for using their, their name, image, and likeness in FIFA. And apparently, like I said, according to The Athletic, uh, many players are also on board with this. Now, the Athletic does say that they're not exactly sure what the players plan on doing, but uh, that there are players that at least have taken exception to the way that EA Sports is using them and, and how it all works in FIFA. And uh, to The Athletic's credit, they did find some precedent to this. Uh, they say in June of this year, 450 players in Brazil won a settlement of 6.5 million Brazilian dollars after the Union of Athletes of Santa Catarina brought a case against them in court. Uh, but they have a quote, a quote from the sports lawyer, uh, Nick Couchman, says the issue of the use of player names and images within video games has long been the subject of controversy. The situation is complicated by the applicable rules varying across jurisdictions because, of course, FIFA involves players and teams from all over the world and is released all over the world, but the rules are all different everywhere it releases. It's the same game that releases in England as releases in Spain, as releases in the United States, but all of our rules are different regarding the way that athletes are paid, so that makes EA's job even more difficult when it comes to figuring this all out. Those of us who have been sports games fans for a long time, uh, we remember when this exact kind of conversation happened around 2014-2015, uh, and that's what cost us the beloved NCAA games series, both football and basketball. So this is something that's familiar to us. 
I want to take this opportunity to get into the larger issue here because I think there is a larger issue. It's something that I am going to have to tread carefully about explaining because there is a difference between recognizing that athletes have a place in the wider in the wider world of sports and sports uh, business. They also, I mean, they have rights the same as everyone else. So I want to talk about the fact that social media has allowed athletes to make their voices heard, to be out there. Sometimes that doesn't so much work in their favor. And I think this is one of those times when it comes to specifically how athletes are dealing with this FIFA thing. Look, athletes are not lawyers. I'm not a lawyer. Lawyers are the ones who figured out these contracts. The lawyers are the ones who figured out these licensing agreements. I don't believe that athletes read through every word of their contracts when they sign. I think they are talked through it by their agent, but I don't believe that they sit there and read through all of the contracts and go through all the legalese and know exactly what they're signing. I think they, I think they know what they're signing. I'm not saying that they just sign on the dotted line without reading. But I'm saying that I don't think they read all of the legalese. That's a lawyer's job to, to do that. And I think that a lot of times that just doesn't get communicated to the athletes. Well, before, the athletes had channels to go through to communicate. They had to go through a team's press officer. They had to go to the media. They had to go somewhere to communicate. And so issues that the athlete wanted to bring up often went through several filters before an athlete could actually bring those issues up. Well now, with social media and with specifically Twitter, none of those filters exist anymore. So someone like someone like Zlatan can think to himself while playing a game of FIFA, huh, I didn't get a check from EA Sports from this, so that's kinda that's kinda messed up, and then tweets about it. And because he has millions of followers, millions of people see that, and it starts this whole movement. Well, that's something that wouldn't have been possible before. And sometimes that's a good thing. When it comes to uh, when we've seen in the NFL, big social media movements concerning concussions and players getting paid after retirement to help with the health issues as a result of football, that's a good thing. This, however, this is this is something different. For athletes to complain on social media about something that they, uh, I, I don't want to say are not knowledgeable of because I don't know exactly what their knowledge base is, but it certainly seems like Zlatan and Gareth Bale and all these players that are apparently on board are not aware that they did sign their their name, image, and likeness over when they signed their contract. They're part of the FIF Pro Union, and if they're not, then they are part of a team, they're part of a league, and part of their contract involves the team or the league taking control of their image and being able to license that, which is exactly what EA has done. And uh, Bleach Report talks about talks about the exact same thing uh, in their article. Uh, they say, if a player is not in FIFA Pro, likeness rights are then held by the player, club, or international team. Given the sheer scope of the FIFA game series and the number of federations and leagues around the sport, there are likely numerous separate licensing agreements EA, EA has in place to obtain the likeness of every top player, which is exactly what they've done. And so the players may not really know exactly what they're signing they may not know that they've given their their image rights away to be licensed by their club uh, or by their country you know whoever it may be but they have and again before social media if they wanted to talk about something like this there they would go through multiple filters hopefully one of which would tell them no Zlatan you did sign your image away and so what's happening is legal. You may not get a check, but here's the reality. You're getting paid a lot. Well, part of that money probably comes from buying your image rights. You know, I mean, we think about an athlete contract. We as fans, when we see an athlete sign a new deal, we see two numbers, number of years and the amount of money. Those are the two numbers we see. And sometimes, depending on the sport, we see the guaranteed money and then the incentive money. But do we ever see how that money actually breaks down? Do we ever see how they actually arrived at that number? The reality is, is that when teams negotiate, the, the way that they figure out that number is through a myriad of methods. They don't just settle on a number that they want to use. 
they're buying they're buying a lot of things from the athlete that's essentially what's going on they're buying the services of the athlete but they're also buying again the the image rights they're buying the time of that athlete they're buying the endorsement rights of that athlete they're buying all of these different things that they're buying from the athlete we don't necessarily see how that breaks down my point here is that be, just because you have access to millions of your fans to say these things that Zlatan is saying or that Jurgen Klopp has said about how broadcasters don't care about about uh, the athletes getting injured, the reality is that because you've lost that filter, I think that there is now a lack of communication between the players and coaches and everyone else that has to do with the business. I don't want to be so callous as to say that that professional sports wouldn't exist if it weren't for the rest of the business apparatus, but I do think that it's worth noting that a big reason why soccer has grown so much in the United States is because of the FIFA game series. And Zlatan, if you'll remember, came over to the United States and made a lot of money to play soccer, in large part because the sport has reached so many additional eyes because of television and video games. So all of these things are intertwined. So Zlatan may be sitting here and saying, well, I'm the athlete, I should get paid, and you should get paid, but the reality is is that you wouldn't make any money if no fans were interested in the product that you are selling, you as an athlete and as a coach and as a team. So there is a larger business apparatus surrounding sports than just the athletes themselves. And I think when athletes can go straight to social media, it's very easy for them to forget that they are essentially, I mean, I don't wanna put it so callously, but essentially they are playing at the leisure of the fans. If the fans decided that we don't wanna see, uh, we don't wanna see professional basketball anymore, well, then none of the NBA players would be getting paid because the fans wouldn't care. So, Again, I, I, I think what needs to be mentioned here is that without a filter, without the typical barriers between an athlete talking and what they're and, and who they're talking to, we get a situation where athletes have become more and more disconnected from the rest of the business apparatus. And I do think it hurts because if Zlatan and these other players were, were to go so far as to present a legal challenge to EA and to FIFA Pro, then that's the end of the FIFA video game. And the, and, and the irony is that it hurts the athletes the most. I am speaking as someone who got into soccer almost entirely because of FIFA, and now I'm a huge fan. And if I didn't have that avenue open to me, I would not be as big a fan as I am and give my money and my time to watch professional soccer. And I know a lot of Americans are exactly like that. And not just Americans, people all over the world get into certain sports because they see them on TV, because they see them on video games. And so you're actually hurting yourself by, by not allowing your image, your likeness to be out there for more people to see, for more people to get involved. And maybe this is part of the calculated strategy. Maybe the players that are bringing this really, really believe that they have the upper hand here and that they can at the same time get paid more and get get the sport of soccer out there for more fans to experience through FIFA, through all of these other mediums. But I think what's more likely is that the athletes see that they're not getting a check from EA for being in FIFA. And so they just go straight to Twitter. And so we end with this situation where there's the, a, a movement on social media that is completely disconnected from the reality of uh, what is going on on the ground legally. And I think that uh, Bleacher Report, to their credit, pointed this out very succinctly. EA Sports said Ibrahimovic's rights were obtained through a deal with his club, AC Milan. Gareth Bale, who plays for Tottenham Hotspur, is subject to the licensing agreement between EA and the English Premier League. It does not appear either player has any legal standing to protest his likeness being included. Credit to Bleacher Report for including that because it's absolutely true. There is, there is no legal standing right now for players to challenge. But if they were to do it, if they were to do it, 
it still costs a lot of money and is a big risk for EA to take on that legal challenge if there's if there's even any semblance of a case that the athletes can make. So what is my point here? Overall, am I saying that athletes shouldn't speak at all? Well, no. I mean, you as an employee, you have rights and you deserve to use your bargaining power that athletes have earned and they have earned a lot of bargaining power. My point is that for us as fans, because that's who's watching, it's Zlatan Ibrahimovic is not watching this video, but you as a fan of Zlatan, of AC Milan, of soccer or just of sports in general, should be seeing what athletes are saying on social media and ask yourself the question, is this good for the game? Because social media creates uprisings through people not thinking too much about what is actually going on. But when you think about what Zlatan is actually advocating here, is it good for the game? Is it good if hundreds or thousands of players around the world decide they don't want to be in FIFA anymore without getting paid? Without getting paid more? Without getting a direct check from EA Sports? Do you think EA can afford that? Because if they did, if they could, they'd probably be doing it. But I, my guess is they won't be able to afford it. So is that good for the for the game at large? That's the question you need to be asking yourself. What I want to do is I want to give more and more and more fans. I, I don't want to say give them the tools because, look, I'm not that smart either. But I, I, I want to contextualize more conversations so that people, when they see athletes talk on social media or even when they see them talk in a press conference setting or whatever the case may be, we can all think critically and again, think about the larger business apparatus of sports. We are all here because we love sports. We want sports to continue and we want it to grow. We want more things to be involved. And the way that you do that is when athletes, coaches, the front office and the broadcast partners are all working together. They're all on the same page to try to grow the game. And as social media becomes more and more prevalent, I think the divide between all of those groups becomes more and more pronounced. And I think that it, it bears mention so that we can point it out now. We as fans can understand what's going on now and in the future help close that divide so that we can see our favorite sports grow even more as, uh, as time plays out. If you have a different read on this situation, please let me know. These are the exact kind of debates that I absolutely adore. I love having these discussions. So please let me know. Uh, drop down in the comments and uh, and we'll talk about it. I, again, I love doing that. So uh, let me know and, uh, you know, subscribe for everything we do here. I like to think it's good stuff, but hey, you can decide that for yourself. We appreciate you.